relation is really a very new thing. And uh, I think this story that Christina Magua was talking about the invasive species and so on, it's a very good story. We should talk about this also inside this concept. Because we try to arrive to the end of this year, 2000, with the same concepts and indicators for the free conversion, free conversion. Biodiversity, uh, combating education, and climate change that is really the, in general, we don't accept that when we work in other conventions like me, we don't accept that the other are the most important. But in reality, for all the people now in all the world, climate change is really the, the most important. But for when we are talking about uh, <coughs> combat justification, this uh, proposal for the land degradation neutrality, I could ask for everybody what you think about this. Maybe you have a very established concept already about this, but what I could say is that uh, in the near future, next month, we go to decide really what this is the concept, and like was said here, at the end, land relation neutrality also works with the restoration of the, of the degraded natural and semi natural ecosystems. What is natural and semi natural ecosystems? This is another discussion. But in reality, this concept should be the clay question between the other indicators that we are working in the convention, you know, mm -hmm. the six more important, two about people, two about ecosystems, <coughs> and two another lie to biodiversity of climate change, and the two basic the quantity of people, basically, people in the affected areas, and what is affected. <laughs> but this one that was already we are beginning talking about this is something <coughs> that came from the legalization process of the Convention, but uh, was enforced really after the Rio 2020 uh, conference. Mm -hmm. Was there that uh, the international community have proposed this is a new concept in putting the accent that uh, this is a, a question essential for natural capital, in particular for the questions of the society and economy. And like Christina Margot should develop, <coughs> we are talking about the sustainability of the rules of the world more than other things, and this is very, very, very important. The next September, the General Assembly of the United Nations should really decide about these goals and about these indicators. Okay. Was already decided, we, we think that never go to China, maybe it should serve. Brazil, it's very strong in the discussion of this problem. We should be fighting till then, and we should be discussing soya uh, in the context of the invasive species. They are not invasive, it's a lot of autochthon species. And then this context should be also some um, interesting. But uh, the proposal, basically, is that one that is present in your eyes. And on the Convention to Human Certification, we have created a group that was trying to improve the political work about, about this. It's an IWG, International Working Group. Uh, also, to 
the European level, this is a very complicated thing. We tried to develop in the last 20 years uh, European directives for soil protection, and it was completely put outside the level level in general, the strong countries in, in Europe don't accept them. Even in Portugal, in the last years, all the soil protection law was disappearing little by little. We don't have really a very strong legislation to protect, to protect the soil. And this is a general trend in the world because soils and property of land are very populated, and this should be a very, very complicated political question. But we are now dealing with this, and uh, it seems that everybody is very happy with this. For the people that uh, go to this international discussion, knows already what means brackets, colors, the thing. So this means the first the definition that are present now for all of the people that are working in this is exactly this that was in the top. The first is in Portuguese the second one. But the definition that was proposed is that uh, land degradation neutrality is a state whereby the amount of healthy and the productive land resources necessary to support ecosystem services and enhance food security remain stable or increases with specified temporal and spatial scales. This is our the first indicators that I have six plus two that uh, for the Convention of Certification that I have speak before and the maps of susceptibility to certification in Portugal in the last uh, half century in continental Madeira and Azores. Azores became part of the, our national program in the last week. Uh, the service, the Azores service have declared uh, that want to be also aligned with our program. It's, it's a fight of 20 years. Uh, and uh, you have in general the figures changing in 60, 90, but 36 percent of the, the country uh, susceptible to certification for 58 in the last 30 years. And you have the maps and the increase in the left and the figure on the, on the, on the right. And the particular species, the species that we are going to see in your field work, the core cove, the, the evergreen oaks, and also Pinus pinia. Uh, Manuel is sure goes to talk special about some of these species and the new plantations in Portugal that are special um, effect to these arid zones, and also to show that the first 30 years, 60, this was the green, the Green Pole distribution, and uh, there are a lot of books that was uh, written in Portugal, also all around the world, saying that the core oak was the, the stop, the stop of, of its education, and in the last 20 years, all the core oak of in Portugal became part of this of this area. This is also. It was the political intervention taken by the community. There are new, uh, very global themes with the green agriculture and special the dry cereal uh, fields, where in a lot of places uh, were replaced by pastures. This is a trend, a global trend for Portugal, and this gives in general for productivity, some good information. To arrive that this is our max for, that was developed with the uh, uh, the Zonas Aridas de Almeria in Spain, 
with it's uh, from the 20 to 2010, uh, the state of the lands, and you know that land it's more complex than soils, including soils but more but more than needs. This is the state and this is the times between 2000 and 2010. And after this we have a map that synthesizes for our concept what we have called the fact areas by desertification. And this concept takes in consideration exactly what is productivity. And is this productivity, this increase or decrease of productivity that gives you the balance the, from the land degradation in the country. And between what we call, say, with this, taking in consideration these results, this is the data in general, was that in line we have the states and we have the trends on the columns. We have one increase in productivity in all the continental area of 22%, and we have only, this is only for the susceptible to desertification areas, 1.69% of the country is really degraded. This means that in the last 10 years, we have a positive balance in the productivity, this means in land degradation in the country. And what they are proposing, if this is the application of this concept that are proposing now, is that we have to apply this not only at the country level, but also for the region, for the municipality, or for a continent. I can, after year. I want to go to another map. This is only to show you from the previous maps what are the hot spots and the green spots. And I go, I, I hope that the Manuel goes to speak special in the good green spots that are the areas where where we have interventions, forest interventions, also past new pasturage, and we have increased the productivity in all the country. Uh, and with this application, uh, we try to show that the, when we passed from the general philosophical concept of the land degradation network, and we apply this for a country or for a region, a region and so on, is more easy, more easy to understand. Maybe for Brazil, for Spain, for South Africa, this could should be some uh, good applications that you have already uh, we have already information incipient approach but uh, you have decreasing systems early things and applied stable but stressed state stable not stressed and increasing uh, these green one are not increasing and we have this approach for all the world and the new deals for the future should be based in a one approach like this, with the biodiversity structuring beyond. But this is one of the basic approach. These are a series of photos from the public service, from this public service, that shows all the a lot of the work developed for combat erosion and combat certification, not only hydric erosion, but also wind erosion. And uh, this kind of work in Portugal, now we don't think what if they are possible, but they are made they are making this kind of intervention, and this is a large scale intervention also in the pasture areas interventions around village in the mountains. The type, the type. We have some approaches like this one in Portugal. And this, this kind of approach to rectilusion. Yes. Also, 
the terrace, hydraulic uh, torrential tea correction intervention, more naturalized intervention in the same, in the same context. Also, well, this should be for features, features in Badaira mm -hmm. or in Tabuel, the kind of machines that they are using. And again, the, the littoral areas, the sand dunes, the ground area. The salt intervention, salt soils, and the intensity of, of that. Soil degradation in high soil degradation. More interventions around the around village. And all the most important part of these features came from the region called Afium, that are moving now, Rosal Pro and uh, moving from uh, talking about the story in Australia, but also the presence of the Australians in Turkey. And they shows you this region, this is a very historical region, very degraded, degraded because Afium, it's a change of opium and was an opium region in the beginning of the century, uh, the last century, was exactly the, domin the dominant areas was opium areas after they had transformed and now are, they are dealing with the desertification intervention. This is a long story also to say that when we try to find a place where we want to learn and to have good solutions, maybe we have to go to a place here. This is the natural generation of junipers in the north part of the country. There are no plantations. A natural generation of junipers, of sea that begin either or neither. And this is the whole the Sukalpus area on the border, near the border with Spain. And some of them became abandoned. I don't go to talk about the erosion that we came in some part with the new interventions and the price of the wine and so on. But I can show also some interventions like that. This is intervention from the, yeah, the, the eighth year. And also the in the north of the country is the, the structure of the property. <laughs> this is a new ecological map. It's not ecological. It's a climate and pedological map. <laughs> a new one made by the JRC that try that try to lie soils and climate, climate and soil, mm -hmm. and they define the arid zones. Very different from the FDM. Made in the past. For Spain, for the Peninsula America, is very similar to that we have. A small part of Sardinia and all the Sicilia, a small part of Italy, Sorry, only a part for Greece and for Turkey. We should think about this proposal, this new proposal that JRC wants to provoke us. How to answer for this. And this is what I have to say to you about land degradation and The presentation stay with you. Please, if you want to ask me some question or give me what you think about this, I say thanks for that.